so far we have our little list of items that when we click it says you like whatever item was clicked here. Now for our cookbook, our cookbook is a little bit more complicated. We have to associate recipes with each of these items. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do a couple of a couple of things first. First, we're going to create a data source class. Now, see if we have the titles and the recipes, they cannot just come from one array. They'll have to come from a more complicated structure, either two arrays or something. But what we're going to do is we're going to simulate. Let's say this goes to a database or something. We're going to create what's called a data source. We're going to create a class that actually will tell me what the dish is and what the recipe is for that dish. And I'm going to call that recipe data source. So I'm going to create a new class. And I'm, this is a regular Java class. I'm going to call it recipe data source. Whoops. Source. And in the recipe data source, I'm going to have, you know, one string array for the titles, one string array for the description, for the descriptions for the recipes basically, and then I'm going to create a constructor here, public recipe data source, and I'm going to pass it the titles and another string array that corresponds to the descriptions. I'm going to assign these to the global variables, to the member variables here, so titles equals t, and then descriptions equals d and I'm going to create a couple of getters and setters and, and some some things so for the for example the first one is get size if I ever want to know how many recipes are there that will return I don't know the titles dot length I'm just assuming these uh, these lists are going to be of the same size I'm going to do no data validation. You should, of course, but for purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to entertain validating that they're the right length or that they're not null and stuff like that. I'm just going to do a very bare minimum. Okay, so then I'm going to have a getter to explore, to get a title at a given position. So call get title at and then a position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to return titles at that position. In the same way I'm going to create a string get description at and then a position and I'm going to return the description at that position. Right? And that's all really all I need. Okay? That's really all I need. Now you will see that basically if I can create a recipe data source, I can create a recipe data source with you know two arrays and then I have methods to get at the title at position and the description at a given position. Okay? So let's go to our recipes activities and let's look at something for a second. Let's create one of those uh, recipe data sources. So we have the titles here. Let me let me create the descriptions string array uh, descriptions and that those descriptions for example can be you know it'll be for the goulash the first step will be prepare the pot and then the second step will be I don't know cook slowly all right then for the lemon chicken, I'm going to have two steps, for example. First, cook the chicken and then simmer it in lemon or something along those lines. And then for the Italian sausage, I'm also going to have a few steps. So now I've, I've, I've had them, right? So for each one of them, I have two steps. Uh, make a sound. Okay. All right. So basically, I just, I just associated a string that contains the recipe of the, each one of these. It's obviously a very single, re simple recipe. Now to create a data source, right, I'm also going to have it globally here. So recipe data source, and I'm going to call it recipe data source, RDS, fine. Okay, 
So the first thing to notice here is now I have my recipe data source and I can create a recipe data source right here. So RDS equals new recipe data source. And this, the arrays that I'm going to pass are the titles and the description, descriptions, right? The title and the description. So I have created a recipe data source that can now hold and give me either the titles or the recipes with the getters and setters that I created. Remember, recipe data source, I just created it over here, OK? All right, now how do I use this with a list? Remember, a list needs an adapter that provides the data. The array adapter is not going to take a recipe data source as its own, as its object. So we need to do something more clever. We need to create our own adapter. And this video is about creating your own adapter for this kind of, you know, different data sources. Okay, so let's create an adapter. That's, that's not hard to do. But what we need to do first is create a class. The adapter is a Java class, and we're going to call it recipe adapter. Whoops, recipe adapter. Okay, recipe adapter. Now, the important part of this is that the recipe adapter extends an adapter of some kind. In this case, I'm going to extend a basic adapter. Uh, base, a base adapter, I'm sorry, a base adapter, okay? Now, of course, it needs a lot of methods. This, I'm extending a class that actually has a lot of abstract methods, so with a little help of Android Studio, I'm going to implement all those met methods. So here, a class implements abstract methods, so I forget to implement the abstract methods. And um, I will implement them now. So come on, where's implementing the methods? Uh, generate here. So go to generate, get or set implement methods. All these methods I'm going to implement. I click OK. So these are all the methods that I have to implement. And they're fairly simple in the sense that the adapter will ask for the count for how many items are there. How many items are there? Well, they're not, they're not zero items, right? There's as many items that there are in the recipe data source, right? However, I don't have a recipe data source in this recipe adapter yet. So let's create the variables that we need to be able to use this adapter. So first, I'm going to create a recipe data source. I need one. A recipe data source. I'm going to call it recipe data source. Then let's uh, create another variable that we will need later on. You will see a layout that it's of type integer, and then we'll need a context that's a, a type there, and I'm going to call it context. Why do I have these three things? Well, if we do a little parenthesis for a second and we go to our recipes activities and we look at our array adapter, the parameters were a context a layout, and the data. Where is the data coming from? I'm going to create a recipe data source with similar parameters. Oops, recipe uh, adapter with similar parameters. So I'm going to create the constructor here, public recipe, uh, recipe adapter, recipe adapter. And I am going to require a context this context is wh where is the where is this uh, what's going to be the context in which this adapter is going to be used? What's going to be the, the the activity in which this adapter is going to be used? And then a recipe data source, RDS. Notice that I did not include the layout parameter, and I will show you why. We'll include it later, but not for this video. Um, now what I do here is I say okay, a recipe. Uh, I'm sorry. Recipe data source is going to be my variable RDS that's been passed, right? This one. And then context is going to be C, the variable C that it's been passed, right? And then the layout, the layout, I'm just going to 
create it. I'm not going to have it passed. I'm just going to tell you what the layout is going to be. The layout is an integer representing a resource that represents what my cells should look like. And I'm going to use a default resource type layout, which is the simple, simple list item one. Simple list item one is a resource. It's basically it's it's a layout for a cell which has a line of text called text one. How do I know that? You can go to Google. You can find it out. It's um, it's in many many places. It's not easy to find what are all the options, that, what are all the defaults that Android has, but this is one, one of them. So I have a layout, a context, and a data source. Now I can continue with my adapter. So the get count, how many elements in my data source? Well, it's the data source dot get size. Whoops. Uh, sorry. A recipe data source dot get size. That's how many elements I have. If I wanted to get an item given a position, what item would I rec uh, return? Well, how about I return the title? Get title at i, right? So get item at position i, well, it just returned the get title at i. Why? Because that's what it's going to do. Now, get item ID, this is one unique identifier for each element in the list. I'm just going to return the same letter. So what's the unique identifier for the element uh, for the ith element in the list? Well, the number i. So what's the identifier for the first element for the element number 0? Well, the number 0. What's the identifier for the element 35? Well, 35. It's it's a unique number assigned to each element. So that works. Now, the core of the adapter is in this get view. This is where I put together what the cell's going to look like. Okay, this i is the position in the in the um, in the table view. It's the position that I am creating. So when I populate the table view with with uh, recipes, for example, when I had it looking like this, the first uh, cell here is cell number zero, and that is what goes in this i parameter, the number of the cell that I'm going to populate. Okay, and the actual cell. It's this view parameter. This view is a reference to the cell that I'm populating. Okay, so we have to do a couple of things here first. First, I'm going to say, just for purposes of, of uh, clarity, I'm going to say that there's this cell, uh, a view called cell, and it's going to be my view. Okay, so now instead of calling this view, I'm going to call this cell. I say if cell equals null, so if the cell is not being created, whoops, if the cell is not being created, I should create it, right? Now, how do I create a cell? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm assuming that the cell layout, the resource that I have here, this, this Android R layout simple list item, okay, I'm just going to assume that it is in a, some XML file. In this case, it's a pre-compiled XML file that comes with the Android SDK. You don't have to worry about it. But I will create what's called a layout inflator. I'm going to call it Lee for layout inflator. And what a layout inflator does is it's able to look up XML files that I, so then I can use its components. So this is going to be a layout inflator from context. Okay, so from the activity that I'm on, it's going to inflate resources. It's going to be able to access resources. And my cell, it's actually, it's coming, the layout for the cell, it's coming from inflate and then layout and null. What I'm saying is my cell will be of type layout, of not of type layout, but it will look like whatever is on layout. And layout, remember, layout is this configuration, this look and feel, okay, which is basically a cell with one line of text. So if the cell is null, I'll create one. Then what do I do next? The next thing that I will do is to say text view, I'm going to, I'm going to populate the one line of text that it's in that cell. 
text view t1, and I have to import text view, it's equal to text view, and then look at this cell, find view by ID. This is a method that you should be familiar with. Find view by ID. Okay? And the ID for this is Android. I know that this layout has a, a, a text view called text1. I just know that because it's documented uh, by um, Android developers. And it's called this. This is the this is how I access that text1. Okay? And then I'll say T1, which is my text view that I just linked to the uh, XML component, I will set the text of this to the recipe data source get title at i. So I'm going to fill it up to populate it with the title from the data source at position i, which is the position that it's being requested. For each cell that it's created, the adapter is going to call the, the table view is going to call this get view from the adapter, and then what I have to return is the cell fully created. So for each cell, it's going to request the get view. It's going to give me the position, the actual view that's going to contain that cell. Okay, and then I can actually manipulate it. So <clears throat> I have a recipe data source, which actually is able to access arrays and elements from an array, and a recipe adapter, which actually provides the, the methods, okay, so that a list view can actually look at this data and make sense out of it. So in my recipes activities, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this line. It's not going to be an array adapter anymore, right? What, I, what it's going to be, it's that um, recipe adapter adapter is a new recipe adapter and the parameters that I'm going to pass are the context this and the data source R, oops, RDS in this case remember this is my data source RDS okay and everything else should work now in here you like something something let's print the recipe how about we just print the recipe here to print the recipe I just say RDS which is my data source get description at and then I, that position. So whenever I click on the cell at position I, I'm going to get the description from the data source. I'm going to get the description that corresponds to I. Okay? So this is basically, this is basically, um, <clears throat> this is basically me using <clears throat> my custom data source. It's not just a simple array of things. It can be a more complicated object and using my own adapter, basically my own link between a list view and the data source, my own communication among those things. We'll see how that works. So here's the list, and we'll see that it looks the same, but it has one more thing, right? So if I click on goulash, for example, because of my data source, I have the recipe down here. If I click on the Italian sausage, I have the recipe down here. Okay, so now you've created a custom adapter for a custom way of getting data, right? And you've linked it to a list. In the next step, we're going to create our own custom look for these cells.